not to sound too dark side-y, but like, I want to grow this empire, right? I want to yeah. help people. I'm going to serve. I want to leave my mark in the world. By the way, oh. that's the second Star Wars reference. You get a third one that's three strikes, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Star Wars fans here? <laughs> not, not, uh, not on this side of the table. <laughs> not on this <laughs> side of the force, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just had to throw it out there. We well, should have a rule about yeah. that. <laughs> like, but like the, the pre-call framing it. Okay, we cannot have any Star Wars references. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it should yeah. be. It should be part of the emails we send before the show. <laughs> back to the quiet riot show uh i'm tim across from me is my co-host tommy um i missed the last show yeah, i wasn't on it that's yeah. the first one i've missed yeah i did i did kind of mention that what happened not in, i didn't go into details to our listeners but uh i think we were going to keep that topic to a different episode yeah we can yeah we can uh we can unpack that in a separate episode that's if right. we want to yeah but uh so yeah you weren't here and um we had Carlo actually scheduled, but we had to cancel it. So I quickly pulled in a good friend of ours, our friend uh, Bretsky. Oh boy! And uh, it was a good episode. Actually, we talked about um, uh, a very common topic that I think it might even come up today as well. It's it was the work life balance, like. Mm. You know, like we all deal with it. As, as <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> well, that's just it. Like we're trying to figure out what it is, right? Yeah. And and uh, everyone's saying like, oh, you should be able to work X amount of hours and just kind of then go home and relax. But I'm like, I don't, f- I can't find that time. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know. Really, so it was a really good episode, I think. Kind of fake Willy Wonka factory life is that, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, we kind of just dove into that a little bit, and and I know like, you know, Brett and I have like a nine to five job, but then you're an entrepreneur. And I'm trying to kind of transition into that yeah. world. So, like, I think we'll we'll talk about that over the next few episodes for sure. Okay. Because I think it's a – well, it's part of our lives anyways. I would have liked <laughs> to be a part of that episode. Yeah, Shit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I'm sure – well, and we have talked about it, but not specifically on it, yeah. on that topic. And, again, it just comes up in conversation because it's part of our everyday life, right? So Yeah. Well, we can ask our guest about work-life balance Abs- today, too. Absolutely, yeah. I'm sure we're going to talk about it. So, uh, <laughs> Anyways, we have a guest. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. Carlo Taormina. He is a... I'll let him introduce himself, I guess. Why don't... Yeah. Yeah. Tell tell everyone who you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tim and Tommy, for letting me on the show. Uh, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity for letting me share my story. And yeah, so I am a men's life coach, tech performance coach, and a keynote speaker, but it wasn't always that way, but I kind of found this purpose through my journey dealing with my own mental health issues, dealing with depression, suicidal ideation, and now it's so surreal that I get to help people who are in the exact shoes I was in a couple years ago and speak from stages, do podcasts like this, and just to help and shine that light. Nice. That's awesome. So I, I kind of uh, creeped your Instagram a little bit, went back all the way to the bottom because I kind of wanted to see who Carlo really is. And so you had a page that was all, all about fitness, right? Yeah. And is, yeah. so is that kind of what started your, your journey a little bit? Like once it, once it got good, I guess, because I, I assume there was a dark time that you went through, which we're going to unveil. But, yeah, absolutely. I – um. At the time, and of course we're going to get into it, but I was a personal trainer because fitness has always been part of my life. And uh, I wanted, I've always wanted to help people, mm-hmm. you know, we're gonna get to that in the story a little bit, but to give context, I've always been somebody who wanted to serve to help people and fitness was such a big part of my life. I wanted to help people in that aspect. And then eventually my journey evolved. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, because you mentioned that you're, you're a life coach and when you're a trainer, you're coaching people how to get physically better and as a life coach i assume it's the same thing except you're working more on this part of the body instead of uh, the muscles and all that right? well and it's it's interesting because i was flipping through the depression playbook which we'll talk about at some point here uh and physical fitness and you hear it over and over again all the time that physical fitness is such a your, or your physical health is such a big part of your mental health they're so tied together mm-hmm 
And so it's always interesting to me. But when you feel like shit, it's the hardest thing to fucking do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel awful. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit here. And you're telling me I need to go for a fucking walk? Like, eat shit. <laughs> yeah, I want to sit on a couch, eat yeah. a bag of chips, yeah. and have a beer. Like, that's my physical activity today is, like, lifting a beer to my face. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Or with biceps somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, but uh, they should make heavier beer cans. <laughs> uh, I think forty ounces exist. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there is. Yeah, um, I, I know. Like I tried many times to get back on on the workout routine because there was about a year and a half where. I started working out because I was really overweight. I was huffing and puffing. I was snoring. I I didn't sleep well. And I hated every single day that I went to the gym. I only I was only doing cardio. I wasn't doing any any uh, strengthening exercises necessarily, but I hated every day going to the gym, but I left absolutely fantastic. I slept better and it, I lost weight, right? It was, yeah. it was, I, I could eat a pound of bacon and not feel bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just, then I fell off the wagon and I've been trying to, for the last three years, I've been trying to get back on it. Yeah, but you do some physical activity. Yeah, like I play, you play hockey, hockey, but then I you... also go eat a pound of wings and yeah, drink some beers that, after that. So it's that probably kinda... ne- it probably balances itself out. <laughs> At least it's yeah. not making it worse. No, yeah, yeah. But I, it's it's that, that every day, like I'd love to, I, it's so stupid because it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, probably what I need. And I have that 15, 20 minutes, but... It's the Mentally, hardest fifteen and twenty minutes exactly. to decide to spend. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, yeah, we're, we'll get into all of this. Sorry, sorry, Carlo, we're rambling a little bit here. <laughs> but this is uh, that's why our show is it's unscripted, and it's you know we're not prepared really for anything just other than having a conversation and see what happens. But what we usually normally do on this show is we check in. So whether it's a, a daily check-in or a weekly or in the last month, how we are doing mentally, physically, whatever's going on in our lives, it just kind of gives us a good perspective to know where, where we are. In yeah, we use right a number now. system. I don't know if you've listened to the show much, but we use a number system 1 to 10. So 10 obviously being the best. Let's go with this week, this past week. Uh the week before was pretty tough. Like it was low, low, low numbers yep. for me. Uh, I had a death in the family and a bunch of work stress stuff, and just it was all piled on. But uh, this week I actually feel pretty good. I, I'd say I'm like six and a half or seven oh, wow, now. Okay. Like I've come yeah. back. I've had a good week. It's been every day this week has just gotten better and better, mm-hmm. and so uh, it's been yeah, it's been really encouraging this last That's week. Good, so That's and good. this next week I'm going to the cabin for a week so oh, yeah so little, i'm like feeling about that too so i think R&R, like yeah. i'm a seven right now and like knowing i'll be a seven all next yeah. week when i'm at the cabin yeah perfect i don't ever really go past the seven just carlo for you to understand <laughs> my ba- <laughs> my baseline is kind of a six seven yeah. uh if i'm an eight like holy shit <laughs> yes something's wrong yeah <laughs> something if i'm an eight something's wrong if i'm a four something's wrong um <laughs> tommy you i'm i'm running around a seven okay. seven eight yeah uh been i've been super busy for the last few days because i recently just became a single parent <laughs> for for only for 12 days though my wife is on a trip in france and uh so she's just like yeah i'm going to france oh by the way the kids have 40 this, million this, this, activities. This. And, like, my son has certain activities, and my daughter has a competition in there, too. And it's like, oh, great. And a birthday party. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but it's been good. It's been busy. It's been steady. And um, actually, I somehow I managed to find some time to actually relax as well. So it's good. It's it's good. Like, I'm, I'm starting to manage my life a little bit. I mean, for the last couple of weeks. So that's good. Nice. Um, it's a win. Yeah, exactly. So there's, I'm waiting for something to go wrong, like horribly wrong, because like this is not normal. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, Carlo, how are you doing? Yeah, so I'm at a nine right now, cool. guys, and uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. You know, yesterday it was kind of like a 50 50 day. You know, I felt like 50%, I feel freaking phenomenal. But then the other 50%, I was like, I feel guilty because I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I kind of like justified that, 
was that normally like Saturdays are like my last working day and Sundays it's like, I'm doing nothing. Okay. But I realized that my fiance yesterday, she went up to DC, hang out with her friends. She, she had like some college alumni thing going on. And I was like, well, I know I, I kind of have to work tomorrow. You know, I have this awesome podcast I'm going to record. Then I got an event later on today. So I was like, you know what? Today, Saturday, let that be like my lazy day. So I just had like a Dragon Ball Z marathon yesterday. I laid down the couch with my dog. Uh, but then I was like, I should get shit done. So I had that like back and forth with myself. I'm like, you're lazy. No, you're not. Take a break. <laughs> like banter back and forth. But I don't regret it. I had, I don't drink really. I'm, I'll drink maybe on occasion, but like, yet yeah, last night something possessed me to have a beer. Okay. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have a beer and watch some Dragon Ball Z. Very That's nice. what I did. It was nice. great. That sounds like a lovely evening. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's, you know what, it's, I, I actually have that happen quite often where I I tell myself, you know what, I'm going to sit down and watch a show and halfway through the show, I'm like, oh, what are you doing, dude? You have so much work to do. <laughs> and then again, the other part of me is like, yeah, but you're exhausted. You deserve it. And then go back to, it's like I have the little devil and angel on my shoulder, yeah, yeah. right? But it's um, just two devils, though. Yeah, <laughs> but at the end of the day, if if you manage to get your work done, then it's okay to take a break. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think like balance. I mean, you guys talk this yep. work life balance thing, but even just balance in your life, like whether that's the amount of time you spend relaxing or the mm. amount of time that you spend uh, in yourself to like build yourself back up or or work on yourself, whether that's physically, mentally, whatever that is. And then, like, the reward you get from doing work and yeah. accomplishing things and stuff. It's such a hard – I constantly struggle with that because I feel like if I'm just sitting watching a TV show or, like, just taking – having a chill, like, one part of that feels good to me. Yeah. But then, again, like, there's that thing in the back of my head that's like, yeah, but, like, you could just do work, and that always feels really good. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just like – also, I work probably way too much. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, but that's, I'm doing it out of yeah. what I believe to be necessity right now, and maybe mm -hmm. others would say I'm wrong. But, uh, but then it's like, oh, I got, okay, I got to work. I got all this work to do. Everything. This is so important. This yeah. is so important. But then it's like, I forget. Like, oh, also, what's important is spending time with my wife, or contributing at home, or spending time with my daughter, and like, there's so many fucking things that all want my, that all want and need, or my best friend who I <laughs> rarely see. Like it. It's just, there's 60 million things pulling yeah. me in every direction, and I feel like they're all important. Yeah. 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 Carla, what do you do with that? Like, what do you – you must be a busy guy. I'm assuming you're obsessed with your work to a certain extent. And Yeah, yeah. it's it's so funny you mentioned that because I actually had a conversation about this. Uh, I'm part of this mentorship right now, and we were actually on that same subject. And I actually asked that question. I was like – you know, how do you prioritize the priorities? What do you do? I want to know how you structure your day because there are days where I feel like I should be doing more, but it's so funny, especially from, you know, this side of the world, how we're always go, 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 go. And we need to get this done, get this done. But then you go to some other part of the world and it's like so mellow, so relaxed. Yeah. I don't do well in those places. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I do. I can, I can, but I can't. But I just thing in the back of your head yeah. that says, oh, you work. Yeah. And I think it's just like the way we've been brought up in this particular part of the world, in this society, is like we have to hustle, you know, 24 seven grind, wake up at four in the morning, do your cold plunge, and then, you know, work 19 hours and then do the same thing the next day. And it's so funny because in that conversation I had, it was understanding the balance. So for me, everything's balance, everything's simplicity. You know, I like, I'm a Star Wars fan. So, you know, I gotta be, balance with the force so the way i like to look at it and it was a brilliant point brought up to my mentorship is as long as you get the work done you hit the main priorities you knock them out do what makes you happy do what makes you feel fulfilled so there's this one day this was like a week or two ago while this conversation was still fresh in my head my fiance, she works more so in the evenings uh she's a dance teacher so she teaches kids after they're done with school. So she has the afternoons free. And normally like I work in the mornings till the evening and then I'm done by like seven o'clock. So then when she gets home, you know, we do our thing. But then I was like, I want to spend time with her. Like 
I want to enjoy this. So I, I'll never forget. It was a Friday afternoon. I sat down on the couch with her and I was like, so what are we doing? She's like, aren't you working? I was like, it can wait. What are we doing? And we just relaxed and just did whatever we wanted. And then after she left her work, that's where I started to mm. do my work. And I felt fulfilled in both ends. Mm-hmm. I spent time with my fiance. We connected. I felt good about myself. I didn't feel guilty for missing work. But then by the time she left, I was doing my thing. I was getting everything done. And as long as I hit my priorities and my non-negotiables, then it was a good day. Do you do you actually, how much structure do you put to that? Like in your day to day? Yeah. So for the most part, it is pretty routine. Like the same thing kind of happens every day. She has the same schedule. I have the same schedule. So for the most part, I do work in the mornings till the evening because she does have some other things going on. So I am a big fan of just like, time blocking and making sure I hit a certain priority at this time, spend this much time on it, move on to the next task. And I am a stickler for that. Like I need structure. I need to do that. So if an hour goes by and I'm done with my conversations on social media or I'm done doing contract negotiations for keynote I'm delivering, I have a time limit and not a minute goes by. Sometimes it does. But the idea is um, it should not go by and you're still working on that project. Move on. Mm. So by the time I'm done, I can take a break. I can take my dog for a walk. I can eat lunch. Like I can do these things I want to do while still kind of formulating my non-negotiables around that. Okay. Yeah, I like structure. Do you like structure? No, I like chaos. Do you? Yeah. 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 I I think I work better under pressure and in like a chaos... I want to believe I work better. <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, is that the truth or is I, that I the was, adjustment was, you've had to make? I was never like the guy that like I had to follow the schedule, have a structure. It was just I, I think I work better if I if things get thrown at me mm. and okay, let's see what we can do and how fast we can get it done and how good we can get it done. Yeah, I think you're not sure if it really works <laughs> with me or with my you respond, wife necessarily. <laughs> you respond really well to urgency and chaos. Yeah, like way better than I do. I do mm. really poor in that environment. <laughs> I just I just get angry and I freak out yeah. and like I can't handle that. My wife is unbelievable in chaos. Like she thrives oh, yeah. in that environment, <laughs> and sure. I just so we have a we have a good system in our marriage and in our relationship in our home because it's like oh, this is a Rachel thing or, oh, this is a Tim thing. Like if it needs structure and it needs like a plan or, a, you know, it has time to do what it does or needed needs, I'm the guy. So, and then if it's like, we need to do this right now or this needs to happen right yeah. now, like I just back the fuck off and <laughs> let her take the lead because she's just so much better at that. So like my wife left for 12 days now and She's like, oh, we need to sit down and like go through like your every day, like what's going on. I'm like, no, it'll be fine. Like I have a calendar, it's fine. <laughs> she literally took uh, like one of those calendars where you have like extra ten lines out under each day, oh, and like no. she wrote out for me like this. And so here's the thing: if I didn't have that, would I get stuff done? Sure. Would I maybe miss something? Possibly. <laughs> Do I appreciate the schedule? One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. It's I like I like living in chaos, but I do appreciate the the schedule yeah. and, and planned out pl- the plan. You know. I hate chaos so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's get into. So you've found our Instagram page, right? And you reached out, and uh, thank you for that. I that means so much that anybody actually looks at our page and. Strikes up a conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. But so we, we had a little chat, and and you've talked about uh, some some really dark times of your life, and I think it would be nice to go back to that and just kind of briefly touch on that. Like, what made you become Carlo Tarmino today? Yeah, so if we go back, you know, ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to do something significant. You know, I've always wanted to make my mark in the world. I've always wanted to help people. That's just kind of been my thing ever since I was a kid. My mom would back me up on that. And I just didn't know exactly what I was going to do. It was just this like voice in the back of my head. And when I was about 18, I, I found fitness. I found the gym. I fell in love with it. 
And then a couple of years passed by. I was like, you know what? I think I can make something out of this. Let me marriage, create a marriage between my passion and what I really want to do, what I love, which is fitness and helping people. And that started for a little bit. And then I became an online coach. And this was during COVID time and during the year where I fell apart, basically. And it wasn't due to COVID. It was to other circumstances, which I'll get into in a moment. And what I realized is that, yeah, it was fun helping people. But at the same time, I was so focused on the results I really wanted. Not, Of course, I wanted to help people. But I was so focused on the significance part of it, of oh, let me build a business. Let me make a bunch of money, a financial freedom I see on Instagram every single day. Let me, you know, get a six pack. Let me look shredded. Let me, because if I can do these impossible things, then that would be proof to me I can do anything. And I mm. li- literally said that to myself. But what I didn't realize it was that that was self-sabotaging and that was destructive because deep down and sub- subconsciously, that was me telling myself that I was not good enough yet so when I do achieve these external things and when I get external validation, then I'll be good enough to do X, Y, and Z. So that was like my fuel. And every day that passed that I was not living up to that standard, it kind of chipped away at my self-image and it made me feel worthless. It made me feel like a loser, like a failure. And every day that passed by, it chipped more and more and more. So all of a sudden, It comes up to this one week. I like to call it my hell week. And this is where like literally everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And I was like, what the hell happened? So at the time, I wasn't doing my uh, online personal training business full time. I still had a nine to five. I was a gym manager. I worked at this club and I managed it. And right before Christmas, right before my birthday, I got fired from that job. And I was like, okay, goody, this is great. On top of that, I suffered a really bad back injury. I don't know if you're too familiar with back injuries, but oh, I yeah. have <laughs> Tommy very much is L five S one, which is like the most painful thing ever. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And it was up to a point where I couldn't walk. Mm. So the last thing you want is not be able to walk, lay down in your bed all day and think that's like the worst thing you should do. Yeah. Yeah. And then to add insult to injury, There was this young girl I was seeing, you know, we were madly in love. She was the one who was saying, I want to get married, have kids. And I thought it was something that was real. All of a sudden she calls me one day. She's like, yeah, I want to break up. And I was like, whoa, okay. And then to add more insult to injury, like I mentioned before, I was an online coach. I had my own business. I started my entrepreneurial journey. Problem was that I was losing so much more money than I was making. I was making all these investments, getting coaches, putting ads out, spending so much money just to make something, but nothing was happening. And I was losing money and I was going crazy. And what happened next was like, I just kind of took a step back out of myself and looked at the situation as a whole. And I asked, I was like, what the hell just happened? Like, what did I do to deserve this? What's wrong with me? Why me? And I asked that question for a year and it came to a point where I just quit. I gave up. I said to myself, I was like, what's the point of trying if I can't succeed? What's the point of trying so hard when I see these like 13 year old girls on TikTok dancing and they're fucking millionaires and sorry, my language. (laughs) No, you can go for it. (laughs) It pissed me off. And I became really angry and envious. And I was like, Maybe I'm just not meant for this. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe I'm just literally a loser. Like I literally told myself I was a professional loser. And if losing was an Olympic sport, I'd be a gold medalist. And I ran with that story for a year. And I literally Mm -hmm. laid in bed every day for a year. Eventually I could walk, but I chose not to because I just didn't care. I stopped speaking to family. And all I did every day was lay in bed, watch TV, play games, do anything to distract myself from thinking. It was so bad, man. Like, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I hated who I saw. Mm. I just couldn't stand that guy. So so while while this was during this, like, did you have, like, when someone goes through such a dramatic change like that, 
would like obviously from the outside to others it probably would have looked like oh he's hustling he's got his shit together he's like you're and you're trying so hard to project that image meanwhile you're fucking falling apart were were there friends or family or people in your life at that point that kind of noticed what was happening or that you were you talked to was there was there any of that happening or were you just inside yourself and shut out from everybody what was that were you trying to disguise it to the outside people and this was an internal battle or what happened during it sort was, of has how did that melt down it was both actually because i found out like when i was in this current state when i was like happy go lucky and when i was like oh i'm gonna save the world when i when i was in this position i realized i was suffering from these emotions far before december happened but i realized i was suppressing all of it mm. and like that need for significance was fueling me so i did internalize it a lot but then when like it really hit the fan when i was like telling myself i told my family which was the hardest thing to do i told i told them i was like i'm depressed like and i want to kill myself mm. like that's never an easy conversation no and i told my mom she was like, the first person i told and it was so hard and that's when everyone knew so it was kind of a mixture of both and did they like was there what was the process after that like you say something like that you have to you think at that point you're gonna do something to change it did you go see did it like i'm depressed i want to kill myself did how did your mom react to that what it was her sort of response yeah. um, definitely not easy you know mm. and she, obviously you know i knew for her it wasn't something to take lightly i knew like she was not sleeping at all. She was constantly worrying about me. Mm. And also, she knew what I was going through, but, like, I wasn't talking, mm. you know? So she, as much as she may have wanted to have a conversation with me, it just didn't happen. And when it did happen, it was the same stuff over and over again. So it was exhausting for not only her, but my entire family. And it was this unsolvable riddle, almost. Mm. It's like, what is the answer? What can we do? So they mentioned different ideas like, oh, go to therapy, which I was hesitant at first, but I was kind of talked into it and I did it. Oh, let's do this. Do you need a psychiatrist now? Do you need to do antidepressants? Like, what can we do? And it was just this nonstop hamster wheel that I was running on, that they were running on without mm -hmm. a solution. Mm -hmm. And did you do those things? Like, did you go to, the, you said you went to the therapist your facial expression didn't sound like you were very excited about that experience. Oh no, no, no. Because like, Oh, here's the thing. So it was extremely difficult to tell my mother and my father and my brother and sister, Hey guys, I'm depressed and I want to kill myself. Like that was like the hardest thing to do. I had to muster up so much courage to do that. And now like my, my point of view, how I was thinking at the time was like, now you want me to tell a complete stranger over Zoom what I just told you. Like, that's not happening. Yeah. And I was hesitant at first, but my mom was like, please just do it for me. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And again, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I did it. You know, the, the therapist I was speaking to at the time, she was the most lovely person. Like, I still have her contact information on my phone, all the messenger. Hey, Merry Christmas. How's everything going? Like, she's awesome. But therapy didn't help me in the way I wanted it to. Like I, I might've gotten a couple of cool nuggets here and there. And it's kind of funny. I actually kind of use them for my clients, mm -hmm. but it didn't help me. It was just a bunch of talking. And I was like, how do I get better? Like what's going on? Mm -hmm. Why can't I get better? Nothing's improving. That's the only thing I did really. I didn't do medication. I'm personally, I'm not a big believer in antidepressants. That's just me. I didn't want to go to a psychologist, psychiatrist. That's just, yeah, I gave up. I didn't want to do anything else. Yeah. So when did that start? When when did you figure out? Okay, I got like you're laying in bed for a year. You're watching TV and and just beating up on yourself. Which obviously that uh, I was. We should talk about the. We'll go into this your playbook, but like, there must have been a moment where it's like, okay, I got to do something different because this mm -hmm. isn't working and you're not a stupid guy. You had been through this process. You you know how to hustle. You know how to look at yourself and you need to change the way you do that, obviously in that moment. But like, 
you have some of those tools sitting there available to yourself. Uh, when did that shift? What happened? Yeah. So this was in November of 2021 where like this shift started to happen and I was like put on this path to finding my breakthrough. So I remember my family wanted to go out to lunch one day. They're like, Hey, come out with us. And I said, no, like I'm staying in bed, leave me alone. And they're like, come on. And they eventually talked me into it. And I was like, okay, I'll go to lunch with you guys. And I lived with my parents at the time, which is only another thing that contributed to why I felt the way I felt. <laughs> um, yeah. I went to a lunch with my family and it was the most awkward lunch ever. Like I was just sitting there eating my salad, you know, talking to nobody, just me in my little corner. And then after the meal, my brother said, Hey, ride with me. I was like, okay. So we're riding and then all of a sudden we park in the driveway. And then we have about like a 10 minute conversation in the car. And this was like, that put me on the, on the yellow book road. So he puts the car in park. He's like, what can we do, man? Like, what is something we can try to get you out of this hole? And I said, there's nothing. Like, I'm a goner. Stop worrying about me. I know it's not something you want to hear, but I give up. There's nothing that's going to work. And he said, I'm your brother. I would do anything for you. You're my brother. Would you do anything for me? And I said, of course. He says, I need you to do me a favor. And I was like, shit. Why did I say that? <laughs> Fuck. I have to help him move. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> he was like, okay, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to try something different. Leave the house. Go on a trip. Do that. And I said, no. Like, do you know how hard it was to go out to lunch with you, to go out to the fucking cheesecake factory yeah. and have lunch with you? And now you want me to go on a trip? Like, no, I can't do that. He said, what do you have to lose? Mm. And then mm. I let those words sink in and like those words penetrated my body and it was as if like time stood still and I was like the only person in the universe and it was like I had that click remote and I just pressed pause for a bit and I let those words sink in and I was like, that's actually true. Like, I literally have nothing to lose at this point. I have nothing. You know, I already made the plans. You know, I was ready to clock out. Yeah. And as I let those words kind of dive deeper and deeper, I did two things. And this is what really helped me uh, get on that path. Was I kept telling myself, I don't want to die. Like, I don't want to go anywhere. Mm. I want to stay here. And I shifted my focus from the life I was living to the life I wanted. And I just kept saying that over and over again. And then the second thing that really helped me was, I don't know how this came to be, but I imagine somebody struck a match and that tiny little flame on the end of the matchstick was like the real me. It represented the real Carlo, the guy who was funny, the guy who was ambitious, the guy who wanted to help people. And even though it was really small, it was so deep down there and like laid in my gut. And then the more I thought about that flame, it just grew, it grew, it grew. And then after what felt like an eternity within my own thoughts, I finally responded. I said, yes, I'll go. And my brother was like full, filled with excitement. He was like, okay, okay, uh, well, where do you want to go? And I said, I don't know, somewhere warm? Because at the time in, uh, in November, it was a little cold here in Virginia. And I was like, well, let's just go somewhere warm. He said, okay, uh, where? I said, I don't know, Florida. I said the first place that came to my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, well, when do you want to go? I said, soon, let's just get it over with. And then he said, do you want to go with me? Do you want to go alone? What's the plan? He, and I said, please come with me. I don't want to go alone. He's like, okay, don't worry about it. I'll send you the details tonight. That was a Sunday. We were leaving on a Tuesday. Oh, and nice. Plane tickets said West Palm Beach, Florida. We didn't know where West Palm Beach, Florida was. It was on the East Coast, the West Coast of Florida. We didn't know where it was. He just picked it because it sounded sexy. Yeah. Like that's literally the only reason why he picked it. Well, he's jumping on a – he's got a window of opportunity to help. Yeah. And so, and like, get on it. <laughs> Maybe he got a group on from West Palm Beach, Florida. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is your brother married? Yes. 
Oh, well, that's another reason you want to, you know, when you're married, you just sometimes you just need to leave right away, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was this trip for him or for you? More for him than me. But when we left, man, it was like immediate regret. I was like, I, why did I leave my bedroom? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we in Florida right now? I don't want to be here. And my brother was the exact opposite. He was like, dude, let's rent jet skis. Let's go on a fishing trip. Let's rent bikes. Like, let's do something that you've never done yeah. before or in a long time. I was like, let's just go back to the room. I just want to lay in bed. And then the next day, the same stuff happened. You know, I was like, I don't want to do anything. And then we were just like sitting in front of this like restaurant cafe thing. We're like sitting on this like picnic table. And he's just silent. He's like, okay, I booked us something to do. I'm not going to tell you, just follow me. And that filled me with so much anxiety. I was like, what are we going to do? Are we going to some nightclub? Yeah. Are we going to a rave? Is somebody going to die? Like what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, just shut up and follow me. Uh, like a, like a good while. brother would say. Yeah. <laughs> he is a, like, he's notorious for doing that. Like he he won't talk. Like he like when it's like something important, he doesn't say shit. And I'm like, <laughs> so much anxiety and anticipation in me, it's ridiculous. So we're walking, we're walking, and then all of a sudden we're at the stoplight and we're about to cross the street. And in front of us, there is the West Palm Beach Convention Center. And before the light changes for us to do the crosswalk, I'm just looking, and then all of a sudden I see like the marquee sticking out of the ground, and the sign says Tony Robbins, unleash the power within. And I looked at my brother, and he didn't say shit. He was just like, <laughs> I was like, are you serious? And to give you context, I'm not affiliated with Tony Robbins. This is not a pitch for him. Uh, but He's my the brother fucking I, best. Mm -hmm. he, my brother and I were like big fans. You yeah. know, we always been in that self-development, personal growth yeah. arena. And it was so funny because we actually had a conversation about him like, 30 minutes before my brother booked it. Because, again, my brother and I didn't know he was down there. We didn't know what he was doing. It just it was divine timing, I say. So my brother apparently booked us tickets to go to this event. And we signed up. We did the whole thing. And then we're at the event. And I remember, and if anyone who doesn't know about Tony Robbins events, like you're in a room full of 10,000 people. And if that, wasn't social, if that wasn't me having social anxiety enough, I don't know what was, but... I remember having that feeling again, like I was the only person in the universe, time stood still, and I was just sitting alone with my thoughts. And I just kept saying to myself, I was like a skeptic at first. I was like, I hope this isn't like a concert, like mm. a vacation type experience where like in the moment I'm feeling it and I'm like having a good time. But then when it's done, it's like, okay, back to reality. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful it was not that at all. In fact, in that event, it literally opened my eyes to what life is really about, how I found my purpose. And from that moment, like the light bulb went off and it was like the universe was communicating with me telepathically. It's like, this is what you're supposed to do. And I got it clear as day where I told my brother, I told myself, I was like, hey, I don't want to go anymore. He gave me a big hug and said, I'm so proud of you. And I knew from that moment, I wanted to help people. I want to help guys just like I was in that position who are in that dark tunnel right now. I just wanted to shine a light to tell them, hey, there is a way out. Follow me. I found it. Hopefully this can help you too. And ever since that day, on November 13th, 2021, that's what I've been doing. That's fantastic. I love uh, I love the, the whole full story. And one thing I was thinking the whole time that, you know, did Tony Robbins save you? No, it was your brother who took you. But then did your brother really save you from you? No, like you saved yourself from you because you went out for that lunch or dinner with your family. And that's what kind of got the, the snowball rolling, yeah. right? You took and, a small risk. Yeah, and it's it's we mentioned it on our show so many times it's those little steps that really matter because it can turn into something great and and it's amazing and i'm happy that you're still here with us and uh, and uh, you're doing what you're doing so that's great hey tommy among all the episodes we've recorded you know there's one common theme and that's getting therapy we've talked about it lots 
many, many times. You yep, had a yep. really tough time making that first phone call. I had a tough time making that first phone call. I didn't even know if the person I was going to see was the right person, but you got to just try. Thank goodness we have a sponsor that makes it way easier now. BetterHelp has an online platform that allows you to fill out a questionnaire. They connect you with a therapist and you get to communicate with them however you want. So whether that's text messaging, that's emails, that's through their app, that's video chats, you get all those options and it makes it way less scary to be connected with someone. And if you're not into the person you talk to, they'll sign you another one right away. Um, I've gotten a sign mine already and yeah, I can't wait to here. use it. Like by the time you hear this, I will have had my first session and I'm super pumped to talk about it on the show. Yeah, I'm very excited about it and like it's very easy to sign up. It took us maybe five minutes to sign up and um, you answer just simple questions and uh, next thing you know, uh, you got a message that the ther- you will be paired up with a therapist and within the same day, we got the therapist already and the name and a message from them and we were able to communicate with them. So it's extremely easy. So please go to betterhelp.com oh, that yeah that's the thing yeah. betterhelp.com yeah. <laughs> slash quiet riot show and you get to also uh, enjoy 10 percent off for your first month if you sign up uh, using this link so again right here i'm gonna be doing it from here yeah it's betterhelp <laughs> am i screwing it up dot com <laughs> slash quiet riot show um yeah, sign up today and uh, you'll you're not gonna regret it because I'm already enjoying it. Uh, just the fact that we connected with therapist. Me too, man. Thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this podcast. What led you to start writing the playbook? Uh, I wrote that what maybe like four to six months ago. Or I guess we uh, should tell people what the playbook is. Yeah, yeah, sure. What's the playbook? <laughs> so the playbook, I wanted to make it as easy as possible as simple as possible like a depression for dummies essentially mm-hmm. so i basically took all the lessons that helped me and some that put that solved the problem for me if that makes sense mm-hmm. it's not the end all be all bible of if you're depressed read this book of course i want every man or every person to read this book because hopefully it shows something that you may not have been aware of but how I wrote the book and why I wanted to write the book and the sequence of the book was because I remember when I was in that state, I was like a maniac trying to find my way out. You know, I was finding a needle in a haystack and I was Googling, reading articles, watching YouTube videos, reading books, listening to podcasts on how can I cure depression? And even though I was receiving valuable information at the time, it didn't seem that way. Speaking to my therapist, same thing. I was like, this isn't solving anything. Like, Mm -hmm. how is going to the gym and eating broccoli solving my problem? Mm -hmm. And I understood that, and I wanted to write it from that place. And I just took things that not only are information you can find anywhere when you search how to overcome depression, but I wrote down, like, the one thing I did not see. And that was, you need to move your body, not saying just go to the gym, but you need to change your physiology in such a way, like move your body radically for just two minutes. Like if you're dancing to a song, anything that does that for you, that changes your physiology and your body language to put you in a different state, a state of clarity. That was like the first thing I wrote in the book or one of the first things I wrote in the book. And then I wanted it to explain not only what helped me, but the other steps you may hear about in other self-help books and whatnot. And I wanted to write that because I was like, I don't see this in the market. I don't see this, you know, there are people still depressed out there. Why? You know, and I wanted to write this as an additional tool for people, for men, for any professional or individual who just wants to improve themselves. And I just thought it was another resource. I thought it was something that anybody can do. And, you know, I just wanted to make an impact somehow. And that's just where I thought of the idea of writing a book. That's awesome. So I was I was I was scanning through it and I'm I'm going to actually I go through the whole thing and read it in detail but you know just picking out some of the little things I noticed in there like a that maybe that's actually a great way to put it. There's a bunch of little things that you talk about in there and little exercises that you can do and it like you just said like move your body for fucking 90 seconds. Like if yesterday you couldn't move at all like try 10 seconds today or 
go to a separate room. Like if you're hiding in your bedroom, and this is one of the actual examples from your book, but if you're hiding in the bedroom all the time, which is what you did, uh, go to the living room. Spend 10 minutes in the living room. Mm-hmm. And maybe tomorrow go to the kitchen or like little tiny little things to break the cycle your body's in and your your nervous system's in and your mental state is in that keep you stuck in the bedroom Mm -hmm. and I thought that was very interesting because so much of what we do is just the same thing we did yesterday and so I, I talk about this with my wife sometimes too she talks about it is your body remembers all those things and it reacts accordingly and when certain things happen it releases the chemicals that it released when those things happened whether that was two years ago 10 years ago if you don't retrain your body to respond differently can you sort of maybe comment on that because you're a your trainer you're a physical health guy you probably have a big understanding of what that that relationship is between feeling good and physical health and mental health and all that stuff maybe that's a bit of a broad statement but (laughs) Well, I understood this fact that really kind of opened my eyes. And hopefully when I say this, it kind of opens the eyes of people listening is it's one thing to understand something on a cognitive level, but it's another thing to actually feel it, you know? So if I were to talk to a smoker right now and say, Hey, smoking's bad for you, Bob, is Bob really going to quit smoking? He knows it's bad for him. But he's not going to quit smoking. Yeah, I'm not. But <laughs> if somebody were to actually feel it, and feel why in their body I should quit smoking, then it's going to cause that reaction. So what really helped me was doing this active learning and active interactive thing. And that's why the book is interactive. And that's why I was put into a state to take action. And action is like one of the biggest things I wrote in the book is just doing it. So from that personal training side or just the physical movement side, once I changed my body language and I was – legit in that room dancing acting like a fool you know or sprinting in place doing jumping jacks what it wasn't doing it just for the sake of doing it and having a good time and partying it was actually sending a signal to my brain that is producing and releasing serotonin in my brain which is the mood boosting hormone Mm. so not to get all sciencey and geeky on everyone but it's like if i could literally create a magic pill that i don't have to take i just legit move for a radical uh period of time it's literally making me happier like no bs it's like reducing those symptoms of depression reducing those symptoms of fear anxiety sadness and not only is it making me happier and putting me in a better state but it's putting me in a state of mental clarity where i can make better decisions Hmm. so the easiest example is like everyone who goes to the gym and they go to the gym in the mornings and they snooze their alarm because the bed feels comfortable. They're in a state where they're comfortable and they're in a state to not really make the best decisions. But if you get out of bed, you get, do a cold plunge, take a cold shower or get into a peak state, I like to call it, and like dance for a minute, you're then in a better state to make a better decision. And that's why I think movements is something that is so crucial depending on whatever you do. You know, if you need to make an important decision, change your physiology. If you want to achieve something that's really uh, at a high level, you need to be at the high energy as well. What are some tools people can use or have to encourage themselves to do that when it feels like shit? Yeah. Or what I are some say- tools that you use, that you used or that you do use or have learned over the years, seen other people do? Because not everyone, not the the same format doesn't work the same way for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like everyone exactly. needs a little bit of like you talk, you know doing jumping jacks or dancing or going for a walk like there are a bunch of those different things that can cause different reactions uh what are some of the tools people can use what do you tell people when it's like hey i can't get the fuck out of bed how do you convince someone that to do that for a minute or not convince them but empower them to do that for a minute i know i was there because i didn't want to do jack shit either and what really helped me was doing a couple things and maybe people can do all of them. Maybe people can just really resonate with one. Once I stopped negotiating with my brain and realizing that my brain is just meant for me to survive. It's not meant to make me happy. So if I just tell my brain to shut the fuck up, and I know that sounds super mean and, oh, you're just saying, you make it sound so easy when it's not. 
trust me, I know. But once I understood the truth of what my brain is actually meant for, and I just stopped negotiating with it, and I just literally just stood up. If I can just stand up, that's like step one. Mm -hmm. And when I, as soon as I stand up, I'm already in different physiology. And then taking a baby step from there and just doing micro adjustments. Okay, grab my headphones, listen to a song, start to do a two-step. I'm speaking hypothetically. Yeah. If that doesn't work and like you legit do not want to get up, I use what uh, I learned as like the rocking chair technique, which was something that was really impactful for me. And it was essentially taking fear. And instead of fear using me, it's me using fear because I understood in my position what I was in, I knew I couldn't live the rest of my life like this. You know, because if I did, I'd be an old man in my rocking chair who's 85 years old and still depressed and has not accomplished anything. So I really drilled that image in my head. And I like closed my eyes. I envisioned myself actually as this old man rocking back and forth on my front porch. And I felt if I continue my life 60 years just like this, not moving, being depressed, being cynical, you know, not doing a thing, I'm going to suffer for the next 60 years. So instead of letting the fear of failing again, the fear of getting my heart broken again, fear of whatever, instead of letting that control me, let me use fear to my advantage. Let me use fear as my fuel. So do I want to be that 85 year old man on the front porch? Hell no. I need to do something now. And that's what lit the fuel or lit the fire under my seat to get up and to do something different. Um, and I think that's just a couple of different ways people can find useful sort of harness that fear and turn it into <laughs> I mean I guess fear itself releases certain chemicals in your brain and you can probably take advantage of them or out. not like yeah, you, yeah. no I, I was the same way like when uh, this was well, I talked about it on our first one of the first episodes but same thing I saw these people actually at my 9 to 5 job that you know when I said hey how are you doing they're like yeah that's fucking place you know they're just miserable and and i'm like oh my god that's gonna be me if i don't make a change mm. you know and and then yeah like that fear of almost like you see the future you and if you're happy great but if you're disgusted yeah. like i was <laughs> yeah then there's something wrong and something needs to that, that change has to come from somewhere right and i think that's just kind of the first step but yeah so where you where you are at right now uh, with with uh, the the life coaching like so you you do everything online like tell us something about like what you do today to help yourself and help others as well. Absolutely. So I do you know essentially one thing that spreads to different avenues. So obviously I do like life coaching, high performance coaching, you know, one-on-one -on -one with clients I'm doing right now, uh, starting at like a men's inner circle where we do like a monthly coaching group call. I'm doing that. I do keynotes, you know, so regardless if it's for like a mental health community or even it's for like business consulting, I'm doing business consulting. I have something that I'm doing in April, which is a really nice opportunity where it's still taking those same principles but implementing it in how you can improve business. So I'm doing a lot of keynotes that way, trainings, workshops, and then getting clients from those as well, doing podcasts. And uh, that's pretty much like the bulk of what I'm doing. So it's a lot, but it's like the best. <laughs> do you, as a lot of, yeah, are you travel, like, do you travel much with this stuff or do you, is your client base kind of a more local focus? Yeah. So if it's like my clients, everything's online. Yeah. If it's, maybe an online workshop, online summit, mastermind. Again, it's probably remote like this, but I'm in negotiations right now to do business consulting with like this insurance company. And they're going to fly me out in the Midwest to do an in-person training. And same thing with my keynotes. If there's like an in-person conference, they'll fly me out and I'll do like a 45, 60 minute keynote. So it's a mixture of both. Cool. Nice. You might not love the Midwest if you haven't been there. I mean, I, I like variety. You know, it's like where so we I'm, live. It's the same as where we where oh, were from. Yeah. <laughs> I've always loved to see it. Now, if I were to stay there and live there, that might be a different story. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you know, I, so I, I kind of, I guess you're, when you're mentoring or when you're coaching people, uh, is, is that some, in a way, helping you as well to 
that you found your path because you 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 were on this path and then it wasn't going anywhere you fell off into depression right are you is that is this kind of helping you right now these days where now now you see the results you you've because you've pushed through some tough times and and at the end of the day i think every entrepreneur will experience that feeling of failure or n not moving forward right because there's really no top at uh, entrepreneurship like no there's you, no there's no ceiling because you, you get to the level that you wanted to get to there's always yeah. going higher do you feel like you've you've made it now and now you're opening up to doors to new opportunities and new higher goals uh it's so funny you said that because my personality type is like i'm never satisfied <laughs> you and me both I, buddy like i need to do something different yeah. now i do have an end goal in my mind you know that's something that's not going to be for another five to ten years that's my end goal so like, i know i have something to work towards there but like mm -hmm. as far as right now it's like this is just step one okay like doing coaching calls like this and doing my keynotes like, that's just step one like growing this not to sound too dark sidey but like i want to grow this empire right i want to yeah. help people i'm gonna serve i don't leave my mark in the world and do something before i leave this place make it better in some way shape or form mm. um so by the, help by the way oh. that's the second star wars reference you get a third one that's three strikes you're out <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not not uh, not on this side of the table. <laughs> not on this side of the force, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just had to throw it out there. We well, should have a rule about yeah. that. <laughs> like but like the, the pre call framing it, okay, we cannot have any Star Wars references. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it yeah. should be it should be part of the emails we send before the show. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. good. You're good. You're good. I like it. I like it. Um, but yeah, you know, this is just step one. And when I help my clients, when I do my keynotes, you know, a big thing that's like really surreal for me is it's like I'm getting that same feeling over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm seeing my clients or I'm seeing like the like the person in the front row when I'm speaking to. It's like I'm seeing myself. Yep. do that transformation all over again and it's the most like fulfilling feeling ever and i remember i'll never forget i um i had this one client who i literally had one call with like my mentorships like three months i had one call with the guy and you know he was unfortunately depressed he was feeling really anxious you know he didn't believe in himself like a lot of us entrepreneurs do we have these limiting beliefs and he just didn't know what to do and after this one call he was like, Carlo, oh my God, I don't know what you did to me, but I don't feel depressed. I know what I want. Like, I'm feeling great. Mm -hmm. And then like the rest of like the two months and 29 days, for example, he like, he was just breaking through ceilings and it was the best feeling ever. And it was like seeing myself again. And I was like, oh my God, I'm doing this every day. It was amazing. Yeah. So uh, what, uh, have you ever thought of like, what if you fall back to the same depression levels if because sorry how do i how do i say it properly so are you worried that you're doing what you're doing you love doing what you're doing but you're gonna get to that point where like maybe it's not enough and you feel like you need to do more but are you worried that you're gonna fall mm -hmm. back to the to the same depressed depressed level that you because you you were you know putting all that content out and you were working towards a goal but maybe it wasn't going as as good as you wanted and you said you you're never satisfied so are you worried that you're going to hit that point again what you're doing today um i'm not worried <laughs> no no it makes total sense uh, i'm not worried for a couple reasons one i told myself because even before like, when we started this podcast i told myself like oh if i can achieve this impossible thing that'll be proof to me i can do anything well, I didn't realize my impossible thing was actually overcoming depression and suicide. So I kind of use that. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. I did that. Like, that's super hard. Yeah. Now, I actually, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because like back a year ago, I was getting those same, those same feelings. You know, like, I'm not good enough. I'm a loser. I'll be, you know, those same things were coming up. But not to sound too cliche, not to like sound like a weirdo, but now I literally have a playbook. Mm. Like, I know... Yeah what to do like back then i didn't know jack yeah but now like if i need a tool i can pull it out of my toolbox like i know what to do so that way when i'm in this state 
I know how to break out of it because mm. I would be lying to you guys if I told you that I'm happy every single day and nothing ever bothers me and I never get mad or stressed out. I yeah, do. You're full of shit. <laughs> yeah. I come from Italian lineage. Like I'm 100% blooded Italian. Like if this nose couldn't tell you in my last <laughs> tell you, there it is. And you know, I can get a little spicy sometimes. So I have methods that I can go to right now. I can pull out of my back pocket that says, Carlo, do this. And I do it, and it's like hitting the reset button. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's just what really helps me. Well, you've, created, you've created a set of tools for yourself through the success you've had getting out of it that – that have reprogrammed mm -hmm. yourself to respond differently to that scenario and so i think that's such a huge thing like one thing about going through a period of depression like i i did the same i've been through a similar period and one thing about going through that is if you get out the other side and you have a chance to reflect upon what got you out to the other side you have a set of tools that will never ever go away yeah. and you will never forget them in my mind, I, that's my experience yeah. is coming out of that on the other side. Like, yeah, do I still get depressed sometimes? Do I get sad? Like, of course, I have, I'm a human. I have normal human experiences. But man, coming out of that, it's like, oh, that didn't take me down. What did I do to get out of that? And like, I can just do that again. And maybe yeah. it's a smaller increment. Maybe instead of being depressed for six months, I'm depressed for six hours or six minutes or six seconds. Yeah. Like, it's you that's what i do is like just look back and i don't look back on that as something that's going to cause me to like remember and recall the trauma i look back at it and go fuck i made it out yeah and like what did i do to make it out that's what i need to do in this moment well it, it just it just kind of hit me right now like uh, you writing your own playbook on how to get out of depression is essentially it's what a cheat sheet is when you're getting ready for a test and you got to write yourself like a little cheat yep. or your teacher allows you to write cheat, <laughs> cheat sheet because you're actually learning when you're writing that shit down. Yeah. And yeah. and that's what it is, right? Like for me, I, I I skimmed through it and I liked the ideas, but I don't see myself using a playbook when I'm feeling down because I don't like reading. That's not me. I need somebody to tell me, hey, mm -hmm. go to that other room and jump, do jumping jacks for like 60 seconds, right? So give if, it to your wife. I, well, but yeah, that's the thing. If I read it, I'd be like, okay, whatever. So, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Like I love it that you've you've you found this tool that that is helping you and and helping others, obviously, which is fantastic. How can how can our listeners get their hands on this uh, playbook? Absolutely. So of course you can just get it. Go to my Instagram. Give me a follow. Of course, show me some love. Yep, we'll, we'll throw it all down here. Yeah, of course. And you can actually get it in the link in my bio. You can find the book. And I don't know if this is allowed. If it's not, please tell me otherwise. But if somebody did get value from this, yeah. I would love to offer a free strategy call just for me to help you. No strings attached. If you want to dive deeper and if you want to help that way. So I'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah good. No, we, plug, we, plug yourself. Absolutely. That's... Yeah, give, give yourself a plug. We'll throw all the links in our yeah. product description and on the screen as well. So. Well, thanks, Carlos, so much for taking the time on your, uh, well, I guess yesterday was your lazy day, so today you're working. So, <laughs> no, I really appreciate you taking the time, sharing your story with us. Uh, I think there's so much, I say this, I think, every fucking show, but every time we do one of these, I get as much value out of it. I get more value out of it than I expected, Yeah. and uh, I want to thank you for being so generous with your knowledge and your time and your story and um, just I'm happy that you reached out, and I'm glad we had a chance to do this, and I'm excited to follow the next five years of your life and see what you turned it into. I think that's super exciting, and we'll plug you and we'll yeah, tell what's all your, our listeners what's your about Instagram everything. Tag? Yeah, it's Carlo Taormina underscore Life Coach. Fantastic! So we'll throw it all in there. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Carlo. Uh, I'm very happy we were finally able to. <laughs> Line up our schedules. I know we have to reschedule. Sorry, a some of that times. was my fault. <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I just remember sending him a message like, "Hey, when we rescheduled the first time, like, hey, we, this is for sure happening." And I'm like, "Oh man, sorry, we have to reschedule." <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> but it worked. It like, all worked. Carlo is a nice enough guy, and yeah. uh, and I appreciate you being on our show. For our listeners, please check us out at uh, on, if you're following us on Instagram, great. But if you're not, go to Quiet Riot Show and follow us on our YouTube channel. Subscribe, please rate and review our show as well if you're listening on uh, Apple. 
It means a lot to us. And send us an email if you have a question for me, Tim, or even Carlo. Uh, we can forward it to him, or you can just send him a message on Instagram. But our email is quietrioteshow at gmail.com, and we'd love to hear your story or any questions you have for yeah. the show. Um, Carlo, we uh, we like to thank you by we're going to send you one of these mugs we have our own quiet riot show mugs we give it to each and every guest that came to our show so we'll exchange addresses after the the, the show and uh we'll send you one of these and then we expect you to take a selfie and uh <laughs> post it and plug our show and all that stuff all that good stuff <laughs> well, you know buddy it's gonna be i will hang it on my coffee carts that, that's perfect <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with us. Of course, you know, it's an honor. You know, I'm glad that you guys give me a platform to let me share my story again. And hopefully again, it helps somebody out there. Exactly. That's the name of the game. That's why you guys do what you do. Thanks again, Carlo, for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, buddy. Okay. Thank you so much. Awesome. See you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. All Quiet Riot Show episodes have been recorded and produced by Suver Media. If you think you have an idea for a podcast but don't have the space or proper equipment, please visit suvermedia.com for more information. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit the follow button and leave us a review if the platform you are listening on allows you to do so. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Quiet Riot Show, and follow us on the Instagram page, at Quiet Riot Show. Please share this episode with others that may be interested in these topics. If you know anyone that would enjoy these topics, feel free to share our podcast with them. Also, let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Get in touch with us in the comments on our channel and social media, or send us an email to quietrioteshow at gmail.com.